Hi, this is your host, Abdul Bharti, and we are here at the Open Source Summit in Bilbao, Spain. And today we have with us Florian Villay, staff data engineer at Back Market and also maintainer of Delta RS. Florian, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me, Swat. Let's talk about uh, Delta RS. Let's talk about the, the larger project, the larger open source project, which is about all about Rust, about Delta Lake, and then we'll talk about your involvement. I can introduce a bit what is Delta Lake. So Delta Lake is part of the Linux uh, foundations. It was fully open source as um, a technology that provides um, reliability, performance, and quality on Data Lake. So it's it's kind of solution that break down walls between data warehouse and data lake. So my project was more about Delta RS, which is uh, an application, a software written in Rust, uh, integrated into the Delta Lake ecosystem. You are the maintainer of Delta RS project. Talk a bit about uh, when the project was contributed to the Linux Foundation and how it came to exist. Yeah, uh, it was a long time ago. Um, I think we have like primary need uh, around uh, how we can integrate uh, to the Delta Lake ecosystem without having um, Python bindings or at ability to, to access the Delta tables. Uh, nothing was there to, to uh, like a really lightweight solution for, for us. That's why we start to look over different libraries and we found Delta RS, which was created by Scribd uh, uh, in Rust. And it was really interesting because they have like a really a small layout to connect with Python. And it was um, since then that Backmarket joined to an incorporate and to improve the binding to connect more into the Python ecosystem with uh, Delta Lake with a simple, efficient and reliable uh, li library. So it was one layer with Python connected to one layer with Rust and Backmarket joined the effort by improving these Python bindings. And since then, we contribute a lot to the open source. And right after Delta Lake, all the ecosystem uh, was under the Linux Foundation to, to drive innovation on at industry-wise around data-driven and uh, data ecosystems. I want to talk about Rust language. Uh, talking about language kind of is a sensitive topic. You know, it also become kind of religious also. Uh, I want to avoid all of that. And also, even if you talk about the, hey, technical advantages, technical benefits, that also becomes tricky, you know. But since you are involved with, of course, Delta RS Rust, uh, and we have been, we have seen a lot of, you know, adoption, a lot of developers are moving towards Rust. Uh, as I said, everybody has different reasons for going to a specific language. But, but in general, talk about what are the advantages, what are the benefits that you see modern developers see with Rust that they are moving towards it? Yeah, so it's really good questions. Uh, I think according to the last uh, survey of uh, Stack Overflow, uh, Rust has been the, for the fifth consecutive years the most loved programming language. And I think uh, Rust uh, has won the heart of developers. And I think the main reason why is because you provide a very efficient and reliable programming language without promising the, the features of high-level uh, abstraction API. And I think when you are starting to think about performances or reliable system, you can think about C, C++, is kind of low-level for performance reasons. But you often encounter the same pitfall like memory management, data race collision, uh, segmentation fault, all these kind of issues that really complex, uh, complexify a bit the developer experience. And we rust uh, by having this mechanism of ownership or these kind of different features. You can have the efficiency and also high level ap API as abstraction. And I think it's really uh, something nice when you debug a new product system to have a language that are created for developers. And I'm, when I'm thinking Rust, I'm thinking about other tools like Cargo, which, which is a package manager of Rust. It's really helpful to, and convenient if you want to test, to, um, to, um, to publish, to build your, your crate, which is a, the artifact built by Rust. Um, I think it's really helpful to have this. And the compiler is really friendly and is like a mentor for us because you could help to say, hey, you have an issue there. Hey, maybe you can improve your code base by doing so. So it's really a nice language, and I think right now 
um, for my personal usage um, it's also we are thinking about the energy consumption of the language and I think Rust was the second after C on um, uh, efficiency programming across different programming language and I think we, we need to take this into consideration when we are building systems to be more energy aware about the impact in regarding the carbon emission and so on so for me it's also the best the best compromise between performances reliability high level abstraction without consuming too not too much uh, resources when we talk about energy consumption of language uh, a lot of people they really don't understand the importance and impact uh, so so talk a bit about uh, when you talk about energy consumption uh, by a certain language um, what is the scope of that? Because it's not just you know the the system running on your laptop. It's also about the data centers, and it goes beyond that also. So talk about what do you mean when you say you know that this language is more you can say climate change friendly or you know more eco friendly. Yeah, I think it's a, you are totally right. When you are thinking about uh, software, you have to think about the software life cycle. It means you develop on your local laptop and it's depending where you're at because it's not around building the system but it's running into a specific location it can be in location where the carbon emission is really low or it can be really high so it depends where you are it's the same process when you will publish or uh, going to the ci your continuous uh, integration mode that will build test in the cloud environment so you, again you consume energy and at the end when you publish something and you make it available for everyone um, it's depending on where the software is launched. So it can be on cloud providers that take consideration into the carbon emission emitted or not. So it's not depending. But when you are thinking about the energy consumption, you think about large use case where your library will be used everywhere by a lot of you of software and they will trigger, download and use uh, every time your code base. So if you have a slighter way of improve a bit the code base, you can have a a drastic impact on the energy con consumption and right now I feel like we have a lot of power in our hands you know um, not only on for the cost but we can launch GPU CPU really easily on different cloud providers so having this kind of mental uh, representation of, on the impact could uh, help a bit and I think we need to take into consideration that with uh, artificial intelligence and other topics you can uh, imagine the, the workload uh, required for memory, CPU, network, exchanges, and, and, and so on. So it, this is kind of things that I'm, on my personal side, I, I'm interested in, to knowing more the impact. But I think we need also to take some time and consideration into, into this kind of uh, uh, key, uh, key, key part. It's hard to really predict that what kind of adoption, what, does, what, what the future looks like for a specific language five years from now, because the COVID has taught us, you know, <laughs> and these things change very frequently. But if you look at the trends, you know, that what do you see where Rust is heading, what kind of adoption you're seeing will be there? Uh, just, just talk about that. Yeah, uh, I, I think Rust um, has been, as I said before, really um, a most loved programming language. And I see the, the usage in particular in my uh, ecosystem, in my work around data. Uh, I think a lot of library was rewritten or improved by incorporating Rust into the Python bindings to improve the performance and the efficiency. And I think you have a lot of open source uh, libraries to help you uh, to improve this uh, data processing, data ingestion and so on, like Apache Arrow, which is kind of standard format colon oriented in, uh, in in, in Rust, um, so you can leverage this kind of library really easily. That's why I, I'm thinking about Rust in the data ecosystem will have a huge impact. You can think about WebAssembly, which is a technology that can run uh, on the browser side and make it compatible with JavaScript. So you have a large area of improvement there. And the last part will be more on the generative AI with the large language models uh, right now. A lot of um, of software are built with Python, and I think we can have an improvement to integrate Rust uh, into this kind of uh, of processing to reduce the inference time, to reduce um, the memory and CPU consumption for for this uh, for this model. So the AI will have huge impact in the years to come. So I think Rust has a has a good part to to take uh, to to be in the in this um, in this landscape. Um, and the last part will be um, more about um, 
bindings, I would say, because Rust is really uh, efficient to create bridge between the programming lang language. So I'm seeing like a, a growth of uh, a huge factor of growth to integrate with others to say, okay, I want to learn Rust. So maybe I create bindings and I start to contribute to Rust actually. Since you're talking about you know, people who want to learn and contribute, um, I, I'm looking for a kind of piece of advice for them, but from different perspective. W one is that why they should choose Rust. You know, that's once again very, very loaded uh, question, but it goes back to the first point that you made about the advantages of that. Because sometimes folks who are like in a very early journey, you know, then they, they look at these languages and they're like, because it's a big investment, you know, you have to learn. So that is number one. And then as they do embrace this language, what is your advice? So not only they, 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 do the adoption correct, but they also become uh, a kind of contributing member to the community as well. Yeah, I, I saw I saw your point. I think the most important part about Rust is uh, the learning curve. It's sometimes pretty hard because you have like a new ways of thinking. I'm thinking about the ownership, which is a key uh, in, in Rust. So you have to learn it. So I would say I will recommend to start small, to have simple use cases where you can learn the language. The community of open source in Rust is really awesome. Uh, people are really benevolent, and if they, they know if it's pretty hard to to start uh, contribute to uh, to Rust, so that's why they are really welcome and benevolent to uh, to share the, the the knowledge. And I think it's really important one when you need to to learn something. On on why choose Rust, I don't have really region things to say. You need to choose Rust be, uh, instead of choosing uh, Go or somewhere else. My advice would be after learning Rust, I feel like I am more um, I, I I learn a lot more about my code and I code better right now. So I'm still um, really I really love to um, to work and to learn a lot of different programming languages to learn concepts and to improve myself. And with Rust, I learn a lot of things uh, around development and it changed a bit the way I'm I'm developing right now. Um, I would advise to start small. Take a project. The Rust uh, programming language, um, the online, the book is really helpful. It's really uh, well defined, and you have all the documentation. You can follow the comprehensive Rust. Uh, it was created on GitHub by the Google team on mo mobile. And I'm thinking as well about uh, Tik Manara, uh, which is uh, the leader of Accelerant uh, Learning, and it's a good place to learn because they have like a really helpful um, um, course and training on Rust. So again, I, I, fall, uh, uh, I fall in love with the, the language, uh, but it was really because I, I started to, to see uh, the power and the, and the reliability. In my past, I used quite often C, C++ and create binding, and all the time it was on debugging, on ways, on findings, uh, the right pointers, where it falls, the memory management and so on. Having Rust to take care of it is really great. And on top, having the, um, the mechanism or the, the concept of high-level language is really nice because you have the best of both worlds, high-level API and also uh, good efficiency on, on the low-level uh, operation.